I am frozen. I don't know if I've ever put this much work into setting up a tree stand before, but we have a really, really cool deer that we're trying to kill. And he lives in what I essentially call an unhuntable spot. Um, everywhere I get pictures of him was so thick, you couldn't sit, and other one than sit in the main lines and, and having guys driving by you all day, which is no fun. So yesterday, I got out of the stand, and I went and I did a death walk back here and I covered everywhere I had cameras and I branched out to try and figure out where he could be and uh, there was one spot on the map that looked really good but it was too far to walk and you know we've never gone this far on foot to try and kill a deer in the bush and uh, but I walked it and it was too good there was too much sign all of the missing pieces that I've been looking for in this pocket of deer are all centered right around this little ridge here. It's not much, it's fairly tight, but it's three times better than anywhere else I've had where I can possibly hunt this deer. We're about 500 yards south of where I got the last trail camera picture of him, or the for the south picture of him, so I don't know 100% if he's in here, but I'm willing to bet he is, because we come in today, and 12 hours after I was in here yesterday, the place was tore out. There were scrapes that were all opened. There was a right on the main line there, you can see where two bucks went at it and fought and it, they tore the place right up, which isn't small bucks doing that, so. I'm excited, I think we're in the right spot, but it's a, it's an extremely far walk. Pulling the sleighs in, and uh, it's gonna take a long time to get in here, walk up this hill, and I really, really hope it pays off, because if we can kill this deer, it'll be worth it, but otherwise, this is a lot of effort to potentially not even kill him, so. It'll be a cool story if we do though. He's an unreal deer. But I'm freezing, I need to start walking. It is so cold today. Most of you are probably familiar with how my last couple of whitetail seasons have gone, as I spent the last two years focused on one particular deer before I was finally able to connect with him in late November of 2021. But what you probably don't know was that the single hardest part about committing to one deer in a certain part of the bush for those two seasons was knowing that there were other incredible deer on my camera in different areas that I wasn't able to go after. This drove me nuts. And one of those deer in particular was a buck that first caught my interest in early 2020. He was a cool character 6x6 with split brows and great mass. I had no idea how old he was, but definitely wanted to keep an eye on him to see what he grew into. The following year was even tougher to sit back and watch as he put on mass, height, and threw an awesome flyer off the back of his G2. I did my best to keep track of him and learn as much as I could through my trail cameras in hopes of being able to hunt him one day. After I finally killed my target buck in late 2021 and set myself free to go after a new deer once again, my heart was already set on the flyer buck for next year. But what I didn't expect was for him to throw a massive drop time and a few extra points the following year, making my decision to chase him even easier. And as much as I didn't want to enter a brand new multiple year quest for one specific deer again so soon, it just wouldn't have felt right to try and kill anything else. Uh, it is a gorgeous day to be in the woods today. And I'm uh, actually doing one of my favorite things. As much as I love sitting in a stand and hunting, I love going out and, and scouting and checking cameras and figuring deer out more than anything. So there's one deer that I really want to try and kill this year. Number one target buck. Just an unbelievable deer. And uh, I know he's very killable. He's very active. A lot of daylight pictures of him. But the challenge is trying to find a spot where you can hunt him and where you can kill him. So. 
everything is so thick in this part of the bush. I'm trying to find a shooting lane, I'm trying to find a stand location is an impossible endeavor. But uh, checking a couple cameras, the first one I checked, he was on there two or three times. Once he walked right through a slough bottom, broad daylight on the 10th. Today's the 14th. He was there last night at one o'clock, so I know he's still alive. And I'm checking two cameras here where I normally get them quite often. So I'm gonna see what these cameras tell me. Got a couple more to check. And then uh, I'm gonna go down to the hellhole. Oh, and there's a deer right there looking at me. Look at this. Just a doe, but she's on the main trail that my camera's on. And where I've got that big deer a couple times, so. She's only 20 yards away. I love hunting the bush. Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Wood Wheaton Supercenter, Rexbid Broadheads, the MD of Bonneville, Hoyt Archery, Weatherby, Deluxe Wall Tents, and Wapiti River Outdoors. This segment of Fatal Impact is brought to you by Wood Wheaton Supercenter, a proud supporter of our outdoor heritage. Well, it's not what I'm, it's not what I normally like to do. You guys know how much I hate hunting lines, but I came in yesterday and scouted out and this big drop tine deer is cruising through here like crazy and I absolutely cannot find a place to set up and hunt him. And I know he crosses right here and so we're gonna set up at the edge of this T intersection on this main line this way with one heading that way. We're gonna set up the tripod stands to get some elevation and uh, last year Dan and I did this and we called it the rodeo and I think we're in for rodeo 2.0. But I know he crosses here. I just don't know how many quads and how many other hunters we're going to be dealing with. Um, it's a Tuesday, so I'm hoping it's going to be quiet. And uh, with any luck, we can come in, kill them, tear everything down, and get the heck out of here before too many guys see us. So we got to stand these up. We we're uh, a little bit late because it was a slow haul in here. We're a long ways back. And so we're going to set everything up, crawl in, and uh, we're going to brush a few branches out of the way so we get some shooting lanes and crawl in and see what kind of a disaster we can get ourselves into. I think this is going to have to do. Feels sketchy as heck, but uh, we're going to tuck the other one right up tight, so we're shoulder to shoulder. we got to clean a little bit of brush here, a couple little twigs there, and just a couple big overhanging ones. And then the guy is looking at probably 200 that way, 250 that way, and maybe 300 that way, which is pretty good coverage in an area that I know he travels daily. Why is it that Dan and I always get ourselves into the hard work? He comes up and the first day, we're always either moving stands or going somewhere crazy. Maybe he's the only guy willing to come in and put the work with me, but we are officially set up for the first day hunting, unofficially hunting the drop tying deer, or officially hunting them. Daniel and I would spend the next eight days perched up high on this corner, frantically trying to stop deer as they squirted across the lines. It wasn't a glorious way to hunt, and at times felt hopeless, but it was all that we had. We were seeing a ton of deer, and still getting pictures of the drop tying deer cruising through at night along different parts of the lines. I felt like we were in the right spot and historically knew that we could kill him if we sat there long enough. But as each day passed, doubt started to set in. Daniel had given up the majority of his days trying to film me chase this buck, but I also knew that he wanted to kill a deer as well. What's going on? You tell me what's going on. Oh, you have a camera out. I didn't even realize because your headlamp is bright as a thousand suns. No. So after eight days in these stands, Darcy and Daniel ventured off to a new area to try and fill his tag, leaving me with three days by myself tucked in a couple tighter areas that I could self-film. But here's the crazy part. Man. On Daniel's last day to hunt before going home with the tag still in his pocket, 
he decided to come back with me and give it one more shot after the drop tying gear. We chose a Hail Mary spot along the cut line that we hadn't sat before, set up in a few comfy lawn chairs, and waited for the day to unfold when I spotted a deer step out from the muskeg 350 yards in front of me. When I hit him with my scope, the first thing I spotted was the unmistakable drop tine as he turned and started walking directly towards us. You still see him? Yeah. Give it to him. Is he walking up there? Give it to him. Got him. Dumped him, Dana. Oh, there's another one. Did I get him? Yeah, you dumped him. Dude. This was a Hail Mary of a spot today. And right down where he come out of is literally where I've got cameras on both sides. And where I know he spends the most amount of time. And when I seen that deer step out, I seen antlers and I'm like, oh deer, we got on him. The camera was dialed way too bright. And uh, I got him with the scope and I seen big frame and a giant, giant freaking drop tine off the side. And uh, he started walking towards us. And he went behind one of the hills and all I could just see was the tips of his antlers creeping towards us. And Daniel kept telling me, hit it, give it to him. And I couldn't. And he come up the hill and was looking at us. But I got on him and I was rock solid. And at 200 yards, this thing is going to pound him. Oh, and, you thumped him. And I just didn't know if he was going to turn and veer off. And he, he was cruising. I didn't want to give him too much time. And he come over and Daniel says, I thumped him. Yeah. And I'm hoping and praying that he's laying dead just over that hill. He thumped him. Fatal Impact is proudly sponsored by Scree Gear, Top-Notch Taxidermy Studio, Unirow Electric Bikes, Old Smokes Coffee, Federal Premium Ammunition, High Mountain Seasonings, and Onyx Hunt. This segment of Fatal Impact is brought to you by the MD of Bonneville. Lake adventures happen here. He's laying dead right there. Yeah, he's dead right there. He's laying dead. Daniel. He thumped him. He made it. Oh. 10 yards. Yeah, that's him. That is the deer. That I have been waiting all year to put my hands on. I've had pictures of this deer wow. for three years now. And he, every year he was just getting a little bigger, a little heavier. Last year he had a cool flyer out the back. And this year he has not one, but two drop tines coming off the back of his G2. And I have been dreaming of putting my hands on this thing, Daniel. We better. Have a look at him, because he's right there. right there. You thumped him. He didn't go t 20 he didn't yards. Wow. Look at him. Oh my. Daniel. Wow. That thing is something else. What is this deer, you guys? Wow. Look at this white tail. <laughs> wow. You thumped him too. Perfect shot. Hammered him at about 280 yards. Actually, he was further than I thought. One shot right in the chest. Yeah. Frontal. Look at this split brow. Look yeah. at Last year. He was an ancient old deer with a big flyer out the back and the whole time I was hunting my big deer I wish that I could have been hunting this one and I was looking for him and trying to figure out how to kill him and as soon as he showed up on the trail camera I was in for a surprise because 
he grew, as you can see, two unbelievable drop tines off of that back of his G2 and one on the main beam. And he's heavy, and he was just exactly the kind of deer that you just dream of encountering once in your lifetime. And truthfully, it's been a rough couple days. Um, I was sitting yesterday only about 200 yards in the bush behind me on a hidden little slash line. And my dad texted me and told me that my grandpa had actually passed away. And so he had been sick for a little while. When we knew that he wasn't really doing too well and the doctor told us that it was kind of most likely his, his last couple days, Darcy and I made a trip to town and went and visited with him and, and took Rye and sat with him. And, and as sick as he was, he could barely talk, he could barely speak but he kept asking me how hunting was going, how deer hunting was going, if we were having any luck. And after our visit, as I got up to leave the room, the last thing he actually ever said to me was, I hope you get your deer. And uh, two days later, he passed, unfortunately. I know Grandpa was looking down on me. So we uh, killed this deer this morning and I texted Darcy, we actually had service up here and she brought little Rye up to the bush and we're gonna walk up and show him his First big buck, first big bush buck. You don't think he'll appreciate it, but he's right there, monkey. What's that? What's this? What's that? That's a big buck. This segment of Fatal Impact is brought to you by Scree Canada, rugged hunting clothing for Canada's terrain. This segment of Fatal Impact is brought to you by Tourism Saskatchewan. Immediately after filling my tag, my attention shifted to Darcy and trying to find and set up on a deer that we could try and kill before we ran out of time. There had been another deer weighing heavy on my mind that I knew was very killable, but we simply didn't have the time to commit to him. With a few days left in the season, Darcy and I made the decision to spend as much time as we could waiting to see if he would make a mistake. When we climbed into the stand on our third day, I dropped my binos from the stand as I was getting set up, so I told Darcy that she was going to have to judge and make the decision on her own if we saw a buck that day. At around 2 in the afternoon, she whispered that she could see a buck standing beneath the spruce trees looking right at us. I found him in the camera, and Darcy was going to have to make her own decision. I see him. I'm on him, yeah. Here he is right here. He's all corked in the spruce tree. This makes me so happy. I had a rough go this season. <laughs> I didn't get out as much because we have a little man at home, but still got out quite a bit. Did a ton of elk hunting and got out a handful of times to whitetail hunt. And it's the second last day of the season. And this guy appeared just over 100 yards away or so. In the bush, you, you don't have a lot of time. We're after a, a five by five here that Dana has a really nice picture of. Um, and when this guy appeared, I could tell he had a nice frame. I couldn't tell if he was a 4x4 or 5x5. I wasn't sure if it was that deer or not. This deer isn't that deer, but he's a nice, nice bush buck. He's a 4x5. His, his two main beams almost meet here in the middle, which is really cool. And nonetheless, in the bush, 
you you just never know which deer is going to appear. You don't know if it's going to be one that you have a picture of, if it's going to be a different one, and you don't have a lot of time um, to make a call. And so essentially you're frame hunting most of the time and from where I was sitting, I could tell he had a nice frame and some long points. It was this antler, I believe, that I could see really well and I could tell he had these, these two nice points here and made the decision and figured it's the last or second last day of the season and I couldn't be happier to fold my tag on this, this beautiful deer. So it means we don't have to sit tomorrow because it is cold out here. I can, I can feel like, I feel like I'm talking funny because my, my cheeks and my mouth are so cold. I don't think it's quite minus 20, but the wind today is just brutal. So it's going to be interesting getting him out because we have a ton of deadfall to pull him out of and over. We can't drive the quad here. There's just way too much deadfall and, um, and it's cold. So this is going to be interesting, but 